my presentation today. This is, this is it right here. I don't have slides for you. I just have notes, um, which are more for me than for you, but I'll put them online afterwards so you can kind of see what uh, this is all about. So um, today I'm just going to run through um, how to style a Drupal website. So if you're brand new to Drupal and you're a designer, or if you're a developer and you're scared of making a theme, um, this is, uh, you're in the right place. So um, let's say you have a website that looks really Drupal-y like this one. Like <laughs> the most drupal -y Drupal site ever. And you just want to make it look a little bit nicer. Just take a few elements and, and improve on them. So something more like, well, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go through everything in this one talk, but something more like this, where you have a bit more control over um, the layout, the images, the menu, just how everything's styled. So how would you go about doing that? Um, so the first place to start is just with creating a Drupal theme. Um, can you see this at all? How do I make this bigger? Okay, I'm gonna... No, command, command plus. Is that bigger? <laughs> okay. So, um, so the first thing we're gonna do is just set up a theme. So, uh, what should we call our theme? Drupal Camp? DC MTL? Um, and every theme in Drupal has an info file, so just a way to tell Drupal what your theme is all about. So we're gonna set up an info file which has the same name as our theme, so DC MTL again. And your theme info file is a really simple file. It doesn't, it's not something to be scared of or anything. It it's, uh, doesn't even really look like code. You're just giving your theme a name. Uh, you can give it a description. You can give it, um, you're gonna tell it what engine you're gonna use, which is just the formatting that Drupal uses for uh, template files. Um, and then you need to, to tell uh, Drupal that your theme is for core Drupal. So for Drupal, sorry, for Drupal 7, not for another version of Drupal. So you have to say which version of core your theme works with. So that's all we need in our info file. Um, now if we go back to our site, every time you actually add, a, add an info file or update your info file, um, <laughs> you'll need to clear the cache. So we're gonna go over to the caching page and just, and just open that up in case we need to clear the cache. Um, so back over here, we're just gonna enable our theme so that we can start making changes to how the site looks. And this is our, our beautiful theme right here. You can see the screenshot looks really great. I think some of you shouldn't be in here. You guys should go to other sessions. You, you already know how to make a Drupal theme. <laughs> Who here hasn't made a Drupal theme before? <sighs> okay. Okay, okay. Okay, so we'll go back to my list. So I made an info file. Can you see this text? You probably can't see this either. Okay, so I, I added my info file, I enabled my theme. I'm, I wanna be really trendy as a theme developer, so I'm gonna use SAS uh, for this theme. Um, so to do that, I'm just gonna set up uh, two folders in my theme. I'm gonna set up one for CSS and one for um, the SAS files. So this is gonna let me write all the styling for this theme uh, using SAS instead of regular CSS. 
and I'm going to put all my SAS files in the SAS folder, and then the CSS files are going to come out in the CSS folder. Um, and so I'm, you know, I usually use the command line, but let's just say I'm a really lazy themer, and I'm just going to use a, a GUI tool for my SAS. So I'm going to use a tool to convert the SAS that I'm going to write into CSS, and I'm going to use uh, Scout, which is just a free tool you can download for this. So I'll just click Add in the Scout interface and find the um, sorry, find where my theme is. So to tell uh, Scout about my theme. Uh, DC demo. So I'm just selecting my theme folder, and then I just have to tell it which one of these is the input, so where my SAS is coming from, and then where the CSS should be going to. And then I'm just going to click play, and it's going to do all the conversion for me from SAS to CSS. So you don't need any special modules to use SAS in your themes. You don't need much at all, you just need a, a little tool to convert your, your SAS to your CSS. Um, so I'm going to add a styles.scss folder, so that's the format for, for SAS. I think there's probably a talk on SAS later today, so if you don't know what SAS is, you can go to that. Um, so I'm going to make a new file called styles.scss. And I'm just going to put some really bold formatting in here. I'm going to change the font, change the color just so I'm really sure it's working, and go back to my site. Oh no. What did I forget to do, all you pro themers out there? So I forgot to tell Drupal that I made a CSS file. It's kind of an important thing to do. Uh, in your info file, you just have to um, list whatever style sheets you want to add. So my style sheets that Drupal's going to load, those are in the CSS folder. So Scout is going to make a, a file that has that name, so Drupal can just find it there. Um, and then I'll just clear the cache since I edited my info file, and voila, I have a beautiful theme here. Things are going well. Okay. What's next on my list? I added SAS, I added a styles.scss folder, I um, did some styling, I think I'll just get rid of this, this red, <laughs> I think that's not going to serve as well. Maybe we'll change it to a, uh, some kind of stylish gray. Um, so next, I'm just going to remove the site title, um, remove the menus. They don't look so great. I'm going to upload a better logo, and I'm going to send her the logo um, just to make the site look a little bit more interesting. Um, so I can do all that under, um, under appearance. Because I'm a lazy themer. I don't want to do any more work than I have to. I'm just going to turn off stuff that I don't like. Because the less that's on the site, the less work I have to do. So I'm going to go to the settings. I'm going to turn off the site name. I'm going to turn off these menus. I'm going to upload a better logo. I think I will use uh, the DrupalCon Chicago logo because because I like it. Why not? I'm lazy. I don't want to make my own. Uh, so I'm, I'm updating these settings. Did I click save already? Yeah. 
So there we go, I have a, a new logo. I got rid of those menus. I'll, I'll put one of them back in just a second. And, um, and so already this site is starting to look a little bit less droopily, I would say. Um, so next I'm gonna add back the main menu as just a block so that I can kind of place it wherever I want on the site. So rather than even editing the template files, because as soon as I add template files, I'm gonna have all this work to do to, to maintain those template files. So for now, I'll just go in and um, go to the blocks configuration page and just, just put the main menu in the, the header of the site. Um, and Drupal likes to label things, so the main menu is gonna have a title unless I set the title of the main menu to none. Great, so I have a menu, and it's nice and simple menu, and I, and I can style it however I want. Um, so if you're just starting theming in Drupal, or you know, if you're a Drupal developer but you're scared of writing CSS, the best thing to get over that is to kind of just learn what all the selectors are in Drupal, because they're really, they're really predictable um, and once you start to get familiar. So the first thing we're gonna style here is the main menu. So I'll go in and use my inspector and check out what the, the classes and IDs are that I can use for the main menu. So the main menu, this block here, the ID is block system main menu. Block system main menu. Um, I think I'm going to display this. How do I want to display this? I want to make it uh, in line, I want to center it, because I'm going for like a, a mobile first kind of design, so I'm just gonna start off trying to make the site kind of mobile-y. Um, uh, so I'm gonna make it in line, I'm gonna display it centered, and I'm gonna change the background. So display in line. Um, center. I'm gonna put a background color, and I'm going to remove the margins and add a bit of padding. So just the simplest CSS that I can come up with, and I wanna do all this on the actual list. So in Drupal menus have a, the, the UL on menus have a menu class on them, so you can just, you can just uh, select them that way. Ooh, <laughs> yay, I have my menu all working out here. Um, so some of this stuff I actually want to put on the LI, and because I'm using SAS, I can just nest my elements. So if you're new to SAS, um, SAS is just like CSS, so you can use all the CSS that you normally use, um, and then sometimes you can experiment with some of the features of SAS, like nesting elements. So here I'm selecting all the allies inside of the main menu, um, and I'm gonna make them display inline, and I'm also gonna get rid of those annoying little um, uh, bullets next to the menu items, because I don't like that. So list style type none is how you do that. And then I know Drupal also likes to add these images next to the bullet points, so I'm gonna get rid of those also. Okay, it's starting to look really good. I'm liking this. As a themer, it's like, yeah, things are changing. Okay, what else do I need to do? I think I'm gonna make the logo in line, or the logo centered as well, so it matches up with the menu. And I think it's kind of hard to see these links. I don't think the contrast is quite high enough. Um, so I'm gonna add some styling to the links. So again, I can just nest this. Um, don't go too crazy with the nesting, but in, in this case, it's fine to add a couple levels of nesting. So I'm gonna add a color. Um, I guess I'll just make them white and I'll get rid of the, um, I'll get rid of the underlines. How do, how do I do that again? Thank you. Live demos kind of make you forget stuff like that. <laughs> 
Text decoration, none. Great. Okay, it's starting to look a little better. I think I need to add some, some space around this slogan here, so I'll do that really quickly. That's inside of the header. But because it's a another ID that I'm using as the selector, there's no need to nest things. If you're just selecting something with an ID, don't add more, um, like a, a more uh, specific selector than you need, because it's just not necessary. So I'm just going to add a margin to that so that there's a bit of room around it. Um, and I'll make it italic. OK. I think I need some more colors going on here. So I'm going to add, oops. I'm going to add a background color on the main wrapper of the site, which is where all the content is, is sitting. So I'm going to set the background of the main wrapper to be uh, just a light gray. Um, and I'll put a padding on that, which is maybe going to make some of you cringe, but that's OK. I'll add something for the footer at the bottom. The footer's kind of crammed in there right now, so I'll just do something really similar for that. Um, I'll add a different, so the footer is a region at the bottom, and it's got this selector of footer. Um, so I'll add a different background color on that. And on the header, too, I'll just add a background color, I think. OK, so I have something that looks a little bit more like uh, a website. <clears throat> if I wanted to, to make some changes when the website changes size, I might want to add a media selector in here, too. That's something you can just do right in your theme. You don't have to do anything special that's Drupal-y. If you're a designer, you know how to write a media query, just put it right in, in your theme. Um, so let's say I wanted to have um, a slightly different menu layout when the website is, is really small. Like I want, I want the menu items to display one on top of each other. Um, so to do that, I just um, only make the menu items display in line if the website is bigger than a certain size. So I just put in a media query, media screen, or all, and uh, let's see, min width 500 pixels. So for the, those items to display inline, they have to be at least 500 pixels wide. And I have to actually put a selector in here beyond just my media query, so I'm just going to choose the block menu items. What happened to, oh, there it is. <laughs> I was looking for the website. <laughs> it's over on the right side. OK, so now I have a different layout if I have a wide site and a small site. Um, this afternoon, I think the last session of the day, I'm going to be talking about um, responsive layouts. So if you want to know more about like how to change the layout of the actual sidebars and content of this page, I'm not going to cover that right now, because it's, it's kind of a lot of CSS to write really quickly. Um, so let's look at some other things I might want to add to my theme. I have a whole list here of things that I want to do. These are my, my specs for this theme. Um, so I already made it responsive. Um, I'm going to talk about layouts this afternoon. Um, I added some colors already. Um, let's see. 
CSS for views. So views is like most of Drupal, right? Like most of Drupal site building, you're just throwing all these views together. So as a, as a designer, if, you're, if you are um, just learning Drupal, getting familiar with views and the, the selectors that views spits out is a great use of time. Um, so, so I, this, is a, this is a view here. Um, and I'm going to add just a border at the bottom of each views row. Um, but I only want to do that for this view. So the selector for views is the, the word view and then the name of your view. So the, the, like the machine name that you give it when you create the view. So view city guides, I think that's the name. And then I want to select just the rows. So just each result. Uh, views row, and I want to add a border. Uh, maybe it should be a bit darker, and I want to add a padding on the bottom too. So just a bit, uh, just a bit of subtle styling for the view. Um, if you actually want to change the content of the view, there are so many ways to do that. You can um, go in and configure the view to use different fields. Um, so by default, views is just going to show you a list of teasers, but you can go in and just change what views what views is showing by selecting fields. Um, the other option for this is using Display Suite. Has anyone used Display Suite with views to make reusable little layouts for, yeah, one hand, really? A couple, a couple, okay. So, oops. So if you want to show individual fields and you just want to decide what fields you want to add to this list on the fly, you can just add your fields in here like this, like say, oh, I want to show an image and I want to format it like this. And it's very willy-nilly and you're just like, oh, I'm just going to throw these fields together. And that's, that's normally what Drupal's like, right? That's just how you do Drupal. Um, but if you want to be a bit more methodical about it, you know, this is giving me a list, it's got the title, it's got the image. But if I, I want to say, okay, every time I show one of these pieces of content, I want it to be formatted in the same way, then you can use a module called Display Suite. Oh, Drupal. Okay. You can use a module called Display Suite, and you can use that to create a different um, view mode for your content. So instead of um, just deciding which fields you want to use on the fly, you can decide that you want to always have this display type where you have an image and a title, um, and then whenever you're creating a new view, you can just select to use that. Um, so I can sort of show you I guess, downloading that, but I think I'll, I'll leave that for you to experiment on your own a bit. So how you do that is just going into the display of the, the content. So this is also something that as a, as a designer, if you're just getting into Drupal or if you're trying to um, improve how your Drupal site looks, um, you want to get very familiar with this display, manage display tab on your content types because it's going to mean that you don't have to make so many templates in your theme. So rather than going in and adding all these templates if you want different layouts, you can do um, quite a lot just in the configuration of the site using a manage display tab for your content types. Um, so if you added display suite, you'd be able to add more view modes rather than just these ones that Drupal gives you, like full content and teaser, you could have like a special teaser or like a teaser for when I want to show a medium amount of content versus a small amount of content or a large amount of content. So depending on the context of your site, you'll want to show a different level of detail when you're listing content. So um, what else did I want to do? Go back to my list. 
bonuses, overriding template files, and adding a custom font by adding it to your template.php file. Um, so if you want to write any code in your view, you've got to make this template.php file. Um, and that's even if you just want to do something like, um, if you want this website to be responsive and you want to load a new meta tag in the site so that it'll pick up the, the viewport information, that's something you can do in your template file. And you don't have to be super afraid of a template.php file if you're, th how many themers are here, like really themers who don't like writing PHP and, okay. This is not the audience I was expecting in a triple for designers. Are there any designers here? Where are all the designers? Eight, I have eight minutes left? That's a lot of time. <laughs> so, <what? laughs> I thought I was like, I thought I was done. <laughs> okay, it's going so fast. Um, what else do we want to do to this website? I went too quick, quickly. We can make this look better, guys. Come on, even if we're not designers. Sorry? Yeah, let's let's change the order of stuff. Let's put let's put this at the top, this menu. So let's override the the page.tpl.php, which is the the template that prints out all the stuff on this page. So it's the thing that determines what order everything goes in. Um, like right now it's saying first print out the header, then print out the menu, then print out the main content, then print out the sidebars. And that's, I mean, because I'm not doing any layout stuff, you can really see it here. It's kind of nice so you can see that there's, it's just flowing one after the other. But if I wanted them to come in a different order, like the menu before the header, then I could just, override my page.tpl.php. And because I'm, I'm being kind of like, oh, I don't want to use a base theme, I'm just going to make a custom theme, I have to actually take the template file um, from Drupal core to override it. So to do that, to, to just override the order of where things show up on this page, I'm just going to copy um, the the page.template.php file from the, um, from Drupal core. So where do I do that? It's under modules, system, page.tpl.php. So I'll just copy that to sites, all themes, wherever I put my custom theme. And normally I would make a templates folder, but since I already wrote all this out, I'll just put it in the main folder. Um, it's kind of a best practice to keep all your templates together so that they're all organized. Um, so I'm copying the, the page.template.php and then I'll just, I'll just open it up and there it is. And I'm gonna move stuff around in it. So I think that the menu should be above the header or at the top of the header. And right now it's being printed out at the bottom of the header. So I can just take that element, this header region here, and put it up here at the top. And then I'll just clear the cache. And then it shows up at the top. Although it doesn't look good, it doesn't look as good up there. I don't know, visually, there needs to be something separating this out. Could put a border at the bottom of my header. So the nice thing about SAS is that if there's something wrong with your CSS, it just tells you. It's just like, no, you can't do that. So you don't end up with so many, um, if you make a mistake, you'll notice right away. There we go. What else do we want to do? Someone said they wanted to do something back there. I can't, sorry, I can't hear the question. Yeah, 
Pinterest. Oh. Ça, ça serait bien si vous avez des questions, que vous veniez les poser au micro, on les entendrait comme Oh, it's not a question. She's just giving a suggestion for what I should do. Uh, I think I can't do that in eight minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a views styling, I think, for, I forget what it's called, like the, the thing in Pinterest where it, it displays the blocks. Is it, it's not infinite scroll, it's um, masonry, adding masonry. I bet there's like a views style plugin for that, right? There must, oh, you can't find it. I think that, anyway, I, I think that's out of scope for this talk, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have enough time to consider how to do that. Um, any, any other suggestions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so for, for like the order of contents, like he's, he's suggesting that we should move, really move the menu to the very bottom of the page, um, and that's probably because um, we want the content to appear at very first, so we want to do a content first kind of philosophy, maybe for accessibility reasons or SEO reasons or whatever else, other good reasons. Um, so if I wanted to do that, now that I have this, template here, I'll just put it all the way down at the bottom. I don't know, should I put it down here? Should I put it below the footer? <laughs> How far should I? I'll just put it below the content, I guess. I'll put it right here. Oh, that's the footer now. How did I do that? Okay. I'm putting the whole header at the bottom of the site. Because <laughs> it's in a, it's a, the, the menu right now is in a region, and I'm just moving the region to the bottom of the page. So it probably doesn't make that much sense. Maybe you'd want to um, move the block to the bottom of the page instead. <laughs> but I already have this file open, so I'll just do it this way. Um, and I'll add some kind of div around it. Do I need to do that? Great, so it's at the bottom of the page. Oh, okay, it's, it looks good like this. This is fine, right? We can put the menu at the bottom. <laughs> um, so to, to style that, to put it at the top of the page, um, I know some themes position it, would position it absolutely, so let's do that. So I have, it's called region header, and I'm gonna position it at the top of the page by making it position absolute. Oh, it's gone. Uh, let's see. Yeah, my admin toolbar. Just get rid of the admin toolbar. Um, so I'll open up a, whoops. Yeah, there it is. It's just hiding. So how should I fix that? First of all, it doesn't look that great. It should have, it should be full width. Um, any suggestions for how to fix it? Yeah, using the logged in class. So saying, okay, if you're logged in, then, then move it, um, add, add some space so that it'll actually show up underneath the, the menu, the toolbar. So 
So when you're logged into the site, there's a class on the body element. Logged in. And then you can um, use that to say, push the page down. So let's say the page wrapper. Yep. Okay. We're out of time. Does anyone have questions? If you want to come up to the mic, if you have questions, just while I'm making, seeing if this works. Uh, 